What's going on, y'all? It's me again, Jonah Barnes Moore. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I got a major topic I'm going to talk about today. I don't even really know what to call it. Um, I'm going to start by giving you the background of what inspired it, and then naturally um, I'll get into it. But we're going to talk about two, well, one main thing, which really is what gives your dollar its value, right? So as I was doing my research um, for my last video uh, about the um, All Market Summit crypto edition that Yahoo Finance was doing in New York, um, I was reading some articles, right? And then, so usually I don't dabble in the comments, but I was like, why not? You know, they were popping up. Yahoo got this new thing where they pop up. So I'm like, I'm reading it. So I'm just looking at one or two, right? Then I saw one that says, can anybody tell me what... Um, gives Bitcoin its value. It seems like it came out of thin air, right? And at first I was just going to respond like, well, you know, it's based on supply and demand, right? Then I got to my next thought, which stopped me. And it was like, because my next sentence was going to be, it's a currency, so supply and demand determines that, right? But then that made me realize, oh, there's a deeper issue here, right? If you're not fully understanding a cryptocurrency, that means you're not understanding the term currency, which that means you're not understanding even your dollar and how it has value, right? Because if you knew what gave your dollar value, understanding what a cryptocurrency, how a cryptocurrency gets its value wouldn't be a mystery to you, right? So I was like, oh, okay, I think we're get I think we're getting somewhere with when we talk about the general population. And so like something that's just really, really not talked about. Because we're so used to using it and seeing value in the form of dollars, right? So today's topic is going to be what gives your dollar, right? Your dollar right here is value, right? So like I briefly mentioned, right? It's the same thing as cryptocurrency, supply and demand, market uh, circulating supply in the marketplace, right? How many? How much is out there? How much demand for it is there, right? How much do money do people actually need, right? So who controls supply and demand, right? And when you're thinking about your Federal Reserve note, right? What well, tells you right there, Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve, that is where your money is printed, right? And so the reason probably why you don't really hear about printing money, um, you hear more about um, you hear more terms like monetary policy, right, and controlling for inflation. Those are the things that you hear about when it specifically comes to printing money. But the Federal Reserve prints money, and that's our government printing money for a number of reasons, right? Because they want to control inflation. They want to control, make sure the economy is still running smoothly, right? Smoothly. We're gonna use the parentheses that is running smoothly, right? <laughs> but um. That's who really has control, right? That's who's controlling the supply and demand of the dollar, right? And so when you think about, well, it's just simply supply and demand, right? There's demand for money, which is very high because it's so widely accepted, right? You can go anywhere and spend this, right? It doesn't matter where I'm going. I could go, if I go out my door and be like, hey, anybody want $20? Somebody's going to come run and try to grab this $20 for me because there's demand for it, right? The only difference between cryptocurrency is there isn't a lot of, places where it can be used but there is a lot of high demand for cryptocurrency right so you got to think if the dollar can be used anywhere right it's probably not going to have that high of a value if you are basing a whole economy off of it right because last thing is you want your dollar to be worth um let's go just like this 20 dollar bill is actually worth twenty five thousand, right Imagine trying to trade twenty five thousand with a whole nother country. A country's not going to want to do that. They're like, no, why, 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 why do I need your dollar if I can have my own currency, right? So that's kind of why all other currencies they they have um, different values at different times depending on supply and demand, right? And they exchange with each other, right? Depending on supply and demand, and so they kind of regulate it, and that's how the actual because there's a whole foreign exchange market out there outside of the stock market that you that traders actually can make money on, right? So it's the same thing when the price of the dollar is up and it's down, you can trade it for other. Um, they basically fill orders for other um, currencies in the world, right? So you don't want this to be too strong and super inflated, really, which means that um, 
it the price is way more than what its actual value is worth on a global scale right so that's what monetary policy does they want to control the government is constantly trying to control how much this is worth your federal reserve note is worth on a global scale compared to other um, currencies around the world right so long story short that was a long way of saying that government controls the supply and demand of your federal reserve no that's what simple in one sentence that's what gives a dollar its value right so when you break that down it's like okay yeah cool so the government just printing stuff right but let's go to um the scenario of let's say crashes right when things go bad, because that's what everybody talks about cryptocurrency. Oh, this is a huge bubble. It's going to crash. It's going to come crashing down and it's going to be go away. Like, you know, just like that. That's not happening. But um, let's just say the U.S. economy crashes, right? Let's go back to 2008. Let's go back to when um, there was a huge housing bubble with the whole CDOs and companies betting on other companies. And it all comes crashing down because at the end of the day, there was nothing there was no value really everything was overvalued it was a it was a giant bubble it was super inflated in the financial market it was inflation in the financial market right so the bank runs out of money right 2008 the bank runs out of money your bet your dollar ain't worth too much right now it's it's, it's not hot right your dollar is not hot because it's overinflated. It's overpriced. It's not really worth as much as everybody thinks it is, right? So the, the banks just run out of money because they're trying to pay debts um, to other, other countries because like your dollar ain't worth that much, right? Give me, give me our money, right? So they're trying to pay it out, whatever. This is not what happened. This is a hypo hypothetical scenario I'm talking about right now. So they pay it out, but then you walk up to your bank like, no, I want, I want cash. Give me my cash. Like I need to have basically because you're what I want my value. Like you know what I'm saying? The bank is paying the government. The government is paying other countries like. Give me my value, pretty much. That's what you want. Take it out. Mm, give me my value, right? The bank is going to sit there and tell you that they have nothing for you in 2008, right? They're going to say, we 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 can't, we don't have anything. We got you. We got your credit though. We got we got, we're going to keep track of your value here, but I actually have nothing to exchange for you, right? Exchange like how how am I supposed to do anything if I don't have if all my value is tied up in a bank and the bank doesn't have any collateral to give me, right? In the event that something cash traffic goes down and like, oh, snap, I don't even want this dollar no more. Like people aren't accepting dollars. Yeah. So the hypothetical, right? Banks run out of money and every so now businesses are like, man, the dollar's not worth anything. All right. I don't even accept money anymore. Like I just need, you know, my car washed. Like, we go back to trade times. We go way back. So this is a hypothetical, right? We go way back to like back trade and barter, right? And so this dollar is no longer accepted. Your bank doesn't have any, right? So the bank is should be, is your government, right? Should be obligated to give you some collateral right back. Like, all right, sorry for that. Like, the, or the bank, right? The bank should give you some collateral. Like, say, hey, we don't have this, but we got this, right? Because that's what happens when you know companies go into debt and or they go in bankruptcy and they have primary shareholders they start walking up in the company talking about like no nah, give me this phone that's worth something give me this you know give me this machine that's worth something give me you know uh, this desk that's worth something that's what you know would ultimately happen and that's how you get back to getting value right so hypothetical 2008 money's no longer accepted the banks uh, don't have any more money where is your value now right where where is it where is your value right it's really nowhere you they, there is no collateral right so let's go back in history now past 2008 in the hypothetical situation let's go back to real real history um in the 1900s before uh, before 1971 right so anytime before 71 1971 let's go back there right so there was a time where if the bank ran out of money right you could go trade this in and be like I don't want this, you know, the economy's going bad here. They'd be like, all right, here's some gold, right? Because that's when the dollar was actually on the gold standard. But that wasn't a plausible. That didn't last too long because it's not plausible. Number one, gold was a very scarce resource, right? That is something that's never growing, right? You can't really make gold. Gold's a natural resource. It has to be mined, you know. You have to dig in the ground, find it. Um, keep it in a certain state, all kinds of things, right? So back then, before 1971, 
the economy and your Federal Reserve note was based off of the gold standard. So for this $20 is actually worth um, a couple ounces of gold, right? Or something like that, whatever it is, couple ounces, couple, whatever. Something in gold that your $20 is worth backed by the gold standard, right? And that was similar in other countries too, like um, pounds, right? When you hear, I think it was the UK or... I forget which European country it does, but that you hear the term pounds, right? Because that's what they would give you back and go like, oh, so-and-so pounds based off something, right? So the dollar actually was backed by something at a point in time, right? But gold, like I was saying, is a natural resource. It's very scarce, right? So as the economy started growing and more people started growing in the country and there had to be more money circulating and the Federal Reserve had to control that by printing the money, they had to basically diminish the, they basically had to figure out, okay, how much gold is here do we have and how much supply for money there is and how do we balance that and fit the value into the dollar pretty much, right? That's what they were trying to do, play the game. They realized real quick that as our economy is growing so rapidly, there's no way we can have this much gold on hand and distribute it to people, right? We just can't do it. That's just not, gold's running out. There's a, a finite amount of gold on the earth. So we can't build it. We can't grow our economy if it's based off this, right? So after 1971, so as I noticed, I was saying before 97, after 1971, the US dollar left the gold standard, right? So now the next question is, all right, so what backs it up now? Nothing. It is the full faith and credit of the US government. That's what this is backed by, the full faith and credit in the US government, right? So you're basically saying the government, this I have value in this because the government says so. At the end of the day, I'm going to say that again. I have value in this because the government says so. Full faith and credit. They credit you, right? We got you. We don't have any cash on this right now, but we got we have it written down. When we do get some cash, we're going we're gonna to break you off what, what you're supposed to get, right? Full faith and credit in the U.S. government. That is what the dollar is backed by now. And that is one of the key reasons why people really like cryptocurrency because we are changing that dynamic, right? We're creating digital assets that can be attached to your cryptocurrency via smart contracts or a token where your company is obligate, obligates itself around having a digital asset that it can give to you in exchange for value so it can actually be backed by something, right? Bitcoin isn't backed by anything. Bitcoin is just the first cryptocurrency. Um, it is the leader. It pioneered um, this whole decentralization movement, right? Where people are actually giving it its value, right? So the demand for a cryptocurrency is based off of, oh, people like, oh, we don't have to, value isn't determined by the Federal Reserve and monetary policy. It's just what, it's a simple supply and demand. Now that has its flaws, guaranteed. It's very, it's easy to manipulate the price, but that's just the cost of decentralization, right? So that was the big thing. And then on top of that, um, you can't track crypto. Well, you can track cryptocurrencies. It's just very, very, very difficult to do. So, you know, all the transactions, they keep track of these. And there was a finite amount due to technology basically having the same thing as a code where it's like um, each cryptocurrency for Bitcoin, um, there can only be 21 million produced ever due how they set it up, right? And it's uh, basically a digital algorithm that ensures that. So now it's like, oh, we have a digital currency outside of that, right? Now it's gone even farther, right? Well, how about we make our money smart? That's kind of where we are right now is like people are innovating and trying to make money smarter, our currency is smarter, where we can actually have something that's backed by it, right? And international, or we can just determine, me and you determine, hey, we think that this could be valued like this. We like it so much that it should be this value, right? As opposed to the government using its monetary policies and power to kind of control the price for inflation. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, we do need to keep the economy running. We don't need to go back to barter and trade, but cryptocurrency is the way forward, right? It's taking money to a whole nother level. It's taking this and expanding it beyond this piece of paper into a digital platform where it is it can innovate and be creative and actually be 
backed by something, right? And be smarter. Smarter money, I think, is the best way to describe cryptocurrencies and where it's going right now. Bitcoin was the first, but where all the other innovations are going, we're getting smarter money. And that's what and that's what is really exciting about cryptocurrency. And that's why when I had this revela revelation a long time ago, that's what excited me the most, right? We can make our money smarter. We've just been going along with having our dollars using this because it's widely accepted. It's normal. It's comfortable, right? It's comfortable. But now we're trying to push the envelope once again, which I think this is a paradigm shift in, in our world, simply simple and plain that we can make our money smart. We can actually have it backed by digital assets. The people determine what its value is. That's a whole other concept that we're just not used to, right? So that in a nutshell is now you know what gives the US dollar its value, right? It's monetary policy and the federal government using um, tactics to pretty much make sure the economy still runs, right? By controlling the supply and demand, by controlling how much is printed, how much is needed, balancing it make for inflation, things of that nature by printing, by simply printing and not printing monetary policy or in taxes and taxes is another form of a uh, controlling uh, monetary policy, right? That's what, that's what gives your dollar its value. What is your dollar backed by the full faith and credit of the U S government, right? It was previously backed by the gold standard in 19 standard in 1971 no longer doing that because gold was too scarce and to and the economy was growing so that was a bad um model to base it off of but yeah so i just want you to think about that now when you're out there spending your money right your federal reserve note what gives it its value this has been calculated it's a bunch of economists a bunch of uh policy makers and lawmakers trying to keep the economy afloat the, that's what determines this and cryptocurrency is the people that determine the value right it's not even like the stock market right the stock market is like where the people determine the value too but they more look for um values of companies and what they're doing and all this co other convoluted stuff but when most simple cryptocurrencies are the values determined by its people right so just think of, now i just want you guys to think about that because i think that's something that's just simply not talked about enough um, because we use it so much, we're so used to using it. It's something you don't really think about, right? So I just want to give you that piece of information. It's a food for thought. Really just sit there and chew on that, chew on that for a minute. And then to think about cryptocurrencies and the dollars. What's the differences? What's the similarities? And you'll start to see that cryptocurrency really is something amazing that, you know, people should really be at least knowledgeable about, right? At the very least, you should know what cryptocurrency is because you don't want it to go light years ahead of you and you'd be trying to catch up. It's, it would just be terrible. I don't want you to do that. That's why I'm putting out all these videos. That's why I have my online course that you guys still should enroll in. Um, not too late for free, February 15th. Make sure you do that. Um, and yeah, I just need people to know, like, you know, this is a wave that you don't want to miss. So really just think about that next time you're spending your dollar, right? It kind of changes your perspective on what's really going on in the cryptocurrency world. So thank you for watching this video. I know it went a little longer than I usually do, but it was a big topic and I really just wanted to make sure I explained it to you guys the, um, the best way that I could. If you have any questions, have any comments, please leave them below. Um, I'm here for you guys. You can hit me up. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to enroll in my online course, February 15th, the last day to enroll for free, um, projected to come out February 25th, but I heard some other news. So it might be the week after, right? So it might be what well, seven days after that, the fourth, I think March 4th might be the day, depending if this news was real or not. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. All right. And always be sure and always remember, invest in yourself. And when I say that it's not just monetary value. It could be knowledge, it could be time, it could be relationships. Just make sure that at the end of the day, you're doing things to invest in yourself. All right. Thank you for watching this video. Take care. I hope to see you on the next one.